Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. In this video, okay, I'm going to go look for my Cuban sugar baby. You guys know her very well, Alina. Why not? Hello. How are you guys? Okay, of course you guys know that she's not my sugar baby. Okay, she's a good friend of mine. She does tours here, you guys know that. Here we're out here in her neighborhood, her city, or her part of Havana, Alamar. Okay, let's enjoy it. Let's see what's up. I see a lot of chicas here. Here we go. Sé que he sido un estúpido y estoy arrepentido Analiza tu corazón y devuélveme el amor Que me robaste te lo pido As you can see it's really close here yeah. So as opposed to the construction, the older Spanish style construction that you see in Centro Havana, in Old Havana, out here in Alamar, it's it's really Soviet style prefabricated buildings. Because this community was built after the revolution and they needed to solve a problem about, uh, you know, where people live. Housing. Because there are many houses, so they, what they did was a community full of building to solve that problem. So a lot of the folks that were in the military, right, they were granted housing out here in the suburbs just east of Havana. Yeah. Right, so you have little community stores set up along the major thoroughfares here. It's a lot actually like Centro Havana in, in the sense that there's availability of things, but still it's suburban and it feels very Caribbean at the same time. So the thing is that the tiny store you see over there, they sell all of them. They sell the same, with the same prices. It, it's a stupid thing. Is it, are they government stores or no? Or no, 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 private, private uh, stores, like private cafeterias. Mm -hmm. Oh, you get to see here. Okay. Right. And this one is private or is this government? It's private, it's private. Okay. It's private. Very, very well, private. Where's the government with stuff? Not many anymore. Not many? Oh, wow. No, they, they don't have anything. Do you see that one over there? Yeah. That's the Pesos store where you do the lines. Yeah. The oh, big oh. lines. But you only have to pay maybe like one peso or something like that no, for no, bread. No, 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 not that one. It's okay. uh, where you do the lines to get the chicken. Oh. Right, because the the other one, like you just pay one peso, mm -hmm. it's not that much. Mm -hmm. It's uh, just in front of the house. You see the supermarket yeah. and down, it's the other one. We're gonna I have see. To see it. All right. Well. Couldn't I might speed that in a brother. So our Cuban brethren love their pizza, okay? I'm from New York, so you know I'm bougie, but I'm bougie when it comes to pizza, all right? Let's try their pizza here in Cuba. Watch me lie to you. Never trust the opinion of a hungry man. It's all right. Doesn't have that heavy salt content. It's not oily like how it is in New York, but it's still good. So, a lot of you gentlemen, when you're in Havana, will actually go and you'll pick here a girlfriend that is actually from the local area now that's actually probably a bad thing as you know, those young ladies see a lot of tourists and you know they're probably gonna have another boyfriend they're gonna try to steal your money right so when you guys are looking for girlfriends I I would say that if you're gonna do it it's probably best to get a girl out from the suburbs okay cleaner souls okay cleaner souls <laughs> ones like Alina that won't rob you no I'm gonna help you man. you're gonna make money so no, we're talking about girlfriends though Oh, yeah, I need to get a girlfriend like me. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a self-independent woman. See, you don't need to pay anything. I, I pay for you. It's a lie. It's a lie. It's a lie. lie. <laughs> she lied. I'm voting for that. <laughs> and also, guys, if you want, you know, maybe you're going to buy an apartment in your girlfriend or wife's name in Havana, you're going to be spending maybe anywhere from 
20,000, 15,000 in that range. Out here, potentially 3,000, 5,000. 3,000, 5,000, maybe 7,000 with some stuff inside so you don't have to buy like the, the fish, beds, you know. And for a shared taxi ride to get out here, one way, it's a little bit less than a dollar. Can't beat it. Oh, wow. yes. Yeah. <laughs> so tell me again how you, how, how you got dog. So she was in a shelter. Uh, they found her in the streets with the rest of the dogs and the from the same uh, born, you know. And we went to when my grandfather passed away. We wanted to adopt a dog, and we went to the shelter and we adopted her. That's probably why she's so noble and not loving. Mm -hmm. I, I love her. So you should get a Nina instead of a Centro on a girl. They're not gonna take your money. They're just gonna love you. You know, my oh, gosh. Mm. Aww. Look Thank at that you. Face. <laughs> Alina prides herself in being different from the Centro Awana girls. The girls in Centro Awana are extremely transactional, but at the same time, they're a whole lot of fun. Promise your brother Keenan that you'll have fun and you'll compartmentalize. Sound off in the chat below. Guys, I love cafecito. Now, I have a lot of affinity for my Colombians, however, Cuban coffee, unmatched, unmatched. Amazing flavor, it's really inexpensive, I love it. Cafe Cubano. Que rico. <laughs> oh, 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 well you didn't tell me you were doing this. I told you, I'm doing the and those are my magnets. I have like a whole bunch. Yeah, no, yeah. no, no, but I want them like just one specific, not, not. Okay. okay. Uh, you're going to to Spain. You get one for you and get one for me. Okay. Yeah, like that. Okay. Oh, this one is it's beautiful. I mean. Yeah. Okay. Oh, this is a tiny one. <laughs> this is the rest of the Sioux. This one is intense. Yeah. It's a it's a male. It's a man. He plays a lot. He plays a lot. Hey. 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 So your grandfather got this while he was traveling, right? Yeah, he was traveling. It was a gift. While Cubans may be struggling at the moment, there was a golden era where the Soviet Union and other socialist nations collaborated to create a united socialist front within which some Cubans were able to travel. This is, uh, was a gift. It was given. Mm. It was given as a representation of Elewa, you know, in the Yoruba religion. Elewa it's the one who opens the ways. It, it's a good guy. <laughs> and it's a representation. It usually it's a place behind the doors, like after the behind the doors. And this one was given to him uh for it so the thing with housing here in cuba is actually really a challenge right in part because all right so say a family you know in 1960 there's four members of the family mother father daughter son in a three-bedroom place out here in alamar okay what about the next generation okay where does that housing get built and then for their children and so on 
right? So for that reason, there's a housing problem in Cuba and actually the outward migration actually solves that issue to a degree. Regional geopolitics, the United States makes Cuba out to be a pariah. However, once you actually come here, you get to see that the, the investments of the government at least had the right intention, okay, was to take care of the people. So you guys know that I'm, you know, my origins are in Jamaica. And in Jamaica, when it comes to social housing projects, none of them are of this scale, okay? In Jamaica, I would argue that privatization has actually destroyed access to, to public goods. So, you know, if a young person in Jamaica wants to go to the beach on the North Coast, they're gonna have to range pretty far to go to the public beach. The majority of beaches on the North Coast of Jamaica have been privatized by hotels, and locals have no access to the beauty of their own island. Okay, here in Kuwa, it's a different situation. Wait, I can open it. It's raining, but mm -hmm. usually if you have gray bees here. Yeah. And how many bedrooms was the house originally built with? Uh, this one had uh, three. Three. Because it's on the corner. The ones on the corner uh, has three, half, sorry, half three. Uh, the one in the middle, two, and the other one, uh, like there are three apartments per floor and the other one has two with uh, the balcony and the one in the middle doesn't have balcony so that's Alina during her quinceanera now in you know many Latin countries a quinceanera is like a symbolic party um, when the young lady um, essentially becomes a woman it's like right. week 16 in the United States and in Canada, I think. Yeah, it's the same, but with 15. It comes from because in, I think in, the, in the Spanish culture, when they turn 15, they were present in the society of, as girl, women who are able to get married. You know, to present in the society, to get a good husband and all that. That's where the tradition comes from. And nowadays, of course, at 15, it's considered way too young to get married. Yeah, way too young. Correct, exactly. It's way too young to even consider marriage, all right? Uh, a lot of the times now in the Western world, United States, Canada, UK, Europe, I mean, folks are either not getting married or getting married in their 30s. Oye, hace tantos años que yo vengo subiendo esta loma. Qué agradecida estoy. A home cooked meal here in Cuba. I tell you guys, traveling does not get better than this, okay? Coming into the house, the homes of locals, and eating food the way how they do it, okay? You can go to your resort and then spend bundles of money, but you'll never get this type of experience. This type of experience is invaluable. So, you rice. So, this is Congri. Congri? Congri. In, in DR, they call it Moros. Yeah, yeah, we, yeah. we call it. Moro y Cristiano. Moro, Moro y Cristiano. Moro y Cristiano, porque Moro y Cristiano es con frijoles negros mm -hmm. y el con gris con frijoles colorados. Oh, yeah, okay. there are two types of beans. Mm -hmm. The red black, one and the black one. Yeah, black is Moros, and then this one is. Um, this one is Moros? Because you're using black beans? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And the con gris is the mm -hmm. one with the red ones. With the red beans. Okay. Okay, so. Right now we have congri. Okay. The flavor on this, you can smell it coming out of the plate. Here we go. Amazing. Amazing. Now, you guys know that at times I've expressed uh, a little bit of discomfort with the way how meat tastes here in Cuba when I've gone out and I've eaten it at places. Let's try it here. See? This is exactly how meat should taste amazing great flavor amazing flavor a different mixture of things in cuba you know that sometimes the availability of things is just it's not available right given the system here that's here the, the embargo however they make it work and it's amazing during the transatlantic slave trade not only individuals came over from africa but so did food it's interesting to see that the same root vegetables that i grew up eating in a jamaican household are present in Cuban households, just processed a little bit differently.
What they call Malanga, we call Koko. Meanwhile, our Nigerian forefathers called it Edo. Language is easy to erase, but sometimes food is the unbroken link between us and our ancestors. If you guys want to have this invaluable experience, definitely hit up Alina and um, she'll come to retrieve you from La Havana, okay, the old Havana area, and take you out here to Alamar, right? This Soviet um, style neighborhood that was built during the 60s, right? But anyway, right, um, Alina will pick you up from Moana and bring you out here. And then afterward, you guys can have an, an amazing meal. You can talk to her about pricing and other things. I had to mention it. Tastes really good. I love it. There's nothing like my house for it. I tell you, you know, in all of my time coming here to Cuba, I haven't had a meal this good. Okay, I've gone to you know, different restaurants, El Biki, um, I believe it's Cha Cha Cha, a couple, couple other restaurants. I've never had a meal this good here in Cuba. Okay, so if you guys want to have the same experience, right, definitely hit up Alina and you guys get this done. Okay, again, talk to her about pricing. And also, also, it actually reminds me of family time when my great grandmother was alive. Great grandmother, grandmother, mother, all of us sitting at a table and eating and talking, even playing dominoes, all of it. So just like you guys that like your wine and cheese, your grape, grapes and cheese, your fruits and cheese, this is a similar thing that they do here in Cuba. Cuban Americans that are in Miami, you know, waking up, going to the spot, getting a guayaba con queso uh, in the morning, right? That's that's normal, right? I'm sorry, guys, but this, uh, the, this, how do you say that again? Casquitos. Casquitos. De guayaba. Casquitos de guayaba. Casquitos de guayaba. Much better. I'm sorry. All right, this beats guayaba con queso as you guys do it in Miami. Due to financial reasons, our Cuban brethren cannot travel to see us, the ones that are on the island at least, that struggle to get visas for other nations. However, we can surely visit them. For those of you that are on the fence about booking this trip, I tell you, it'll be life-changing. I keep coming again, again, and again, and there's a reason for it. I'd like to thank you guys so much for watching this video and all the other ones. Okay, we're coming back with more Cuba content. See you guys soon. Peace out. Sé que fallado, sé que he sido un estúpido y estoy arrepentido.